Acts chapter 10 verse 38. Let's read it together. I want to go. Our God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. Please have your seat. Mystery of the anointing. The Hebrew word for the anointing is Meshach. And the Greek word is Christos. Anointed one. The reason why we do the things we do is because of the anointing. Now, in Acts eleven twenty six, the disciples were first called Christians in Antioch. And the word Christ means the anointed one. You think the anointing out of Christianity is no longer the anointing. One day in, in Matthew 17 verse 19, the disciples came to Jesus and said, How is it that we are not able to cast out these demons? And then he said, This can go it not except through fasting and prayer. Now, we have narrowed this scripture to thinking that fasting and prayer is the solution to everything. He was talking about this kind. There are different kind, but this kind of demon, you can't cast it out except through fasting and prayer. There are certain demons that are another kind that you have to cast out with another dimension. Now, when you see a man that is helped by God and you see the glory of God all over him, then you must understand that according to what Bishop is saying, that he's coming from somewhere, he knows something, and he has encountered something that took him to where he is. Some of us are consigned about the glory and we are not consigned about the story. We want to fellowship with the glory but we don't want the fellowship of the suffering. That's why when a father is under attack, sons are quick to check out. When the glory come, sons are quick to come back. Fear weathers sons. When the weather is good, they are around. Members, when the weather is good, they are around. When the weather is bad, they check out. Wives that leave their husband in the midst of storm because of poverty. But hear me, there is something about the anointing. And when I read that scripture, it blew my mind. It said, how God, how God anointed Jesus. There was an how. It was not just a mere anointing in the bottle that fell upon his head. He said, Peter was speaking. He said, how God anointed Jesus. Jesus of Nazareth. If you don't know how God anointed Joshua a killer of Adoikiti, you cannot replicate what I have. So anytime you get around a father, you ask how? Because if you know the how, you can get to the where. Give me 30 minutes, let me rub it. How? How God it was not how God anointed Jesus of heaven. How God anointed a man from Nazareth. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Can anything good come out of a barrack boy? Can anything good come out of your family? Yes. When the anointing comes, it's an amplifier. The anointing is an announcer. The anointing is a yoke breaker. The anointing is a protocol breaker. The anointing is an atmosphere changer. The anointing is a destroyer of yokes. The anointing is the only spiritual transportation and manifestation of reality. The anointing brings deposit that is inside you that have not been activated. Yes. Anointed. The only reason why people climb the altar. And 
we have entertainers. Some are displaying skills and some are ministering under the anointing. Hear me. The world will not hear you until you know how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. Hear me. Without the anointing, life in ministry is annoying. There are two people in the Bible who are angelic people that we saw the anointing upon them. The Bible spoke of Lucifer, thou anointed cherub. He was the only angel from heaven that carried the oil. It was because of the oil he carried, he was able to do that. The oil that was on Lucifer was called Meshach anointing. The anointing for expansion. The anointing that know no bounds and limitation. The anointing that make you do big things like an elephant. Found. Elephants don't give birth like rats. But anytime elephant drop their children, it hit mother head. Sit down. Let me quickly wrap it. Peter. was speaking in the house of Cornelius. In Acts chapter 10, follow me, verse 1, there was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called an Italian band, verse 2, a devoted man, and one that feared God with all his house, which gave much arms to the people and prayed to God always verse 3 he saw a vision this man was not born again his arms was as a memorial he saw a vision in the ninth hour of the day and an angel of God coming into him saying unto him Cornelius this man was not born again now, let me talk to some of you here you don't need to be a prophet to see vision this is an unbeliever was just an arm giver. He was not baptized in the Holy Ghost. He has not encountered the Holy Ghost. He has not spoke in tongues. But by virtue of the fear and connection, he saw a vision. Hear me. If a man that is not born again can see how much more me that is born and washed by the blood of the Lamb and baptized by fire. This is an unbeliever. He saw a vision. Not only saw a vision. An angel appeared. Hear me. If a man that is not born again. Can encounter an angel. What are you waiting for? Not for everybody. A man. That is not born again. So an angel just give me a few minutes an angel appeared to him no, 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 no. put the next verse he thought he was in a vision until the angel said Cornelius and when he looked at him he was afraid do you know why he was afraid it was not a vision it was a physical encounter the angel called him and said you are not seeing a vision you are seeing me physically I am tired of believers who have who have been speaking in tongues and have not gotten spiritual experience the reason why we are doubting power why we are doubting manifestation we don't understand the power of the Holy Ghost Makatabaya. Hear me. God can visit anybody. If pastors will not pray and not get sensitive, he will go to the house of Cornelius. How many of you are in the city and God left you for Cornelius? Ah, a Gentile, a Roman, a man who don't understand the experience of the Holy Ghost. He saw a vision and he thought it was a vision. And the angel said, Cornelius, 
voice the prophetic this is the prophetic in the form of an angel this is an angel of prophecy and he came out the Bible said he was afraid he was afraid he was afraid he was afraid afraid now God let's read up please sit down and when he looked on him he was afraid and he said what is it Lord and he said unto him thy prayers and the arms are come up for a memorial before God five quickly and now send men to Joppa and call for one Simon whose son name is Peter hear me follow me you must have met an angel but you need a Peter hear me some of you think because you encounter an angel that Peter is inconsequential this guy met an angel but yet the angel is sending him to a man who told you that the father is not important it's an angel he met an angel and an angel is saying the problem in your life I can't solve until you meet a Peter the problem that you have you are trying to relegate an institution that have been packaged in a man that angels can't dare to look down on the angel appear with a message and the angel said this is the territorial territory of Peter this is the arena of Peter this is the capacity of Peter this is the dimension of Peter this is where God has raised Peter I am an angel but I cannot do anything until Peter speak to you that's why we have men saying they see angel and yet nothing is happening in their life you are looking down on your man of God because you saw angel yeah we saw an angel sending a man to a man the greatest gift to humanity is the gift of a man to a man not the gift of an angel that's why Paul said the man Jesus he became a gift to us until he became man Now put the next verse. He lodged with one Simon Etana, whose house is by the seaside. He shall tell you what thou oughtest to do. Ah. He lodged. Say, I'm sending you to Joppa. Prophetic direction. Who told you God does not operate in the prophetic? He said, by virtue of this encounter, you become a prophet. He is in Joppa. He lodged in the house of a man called Simon. Even himself, he Simon Peter, the tanner. He said he lodged there. He's not in his own house. This is how God speaks to an ordinary man who is not a prophet. If if Cornelius can get prophetic description, what is wrong with you? You carry Holy Ghost and you can't hear the voice. You carry fire and your ears are blown. We are in the days of the prophetic, not the days of entertainment. And I shoot here. Give me a few times. Hey! May I not be alive and the donkey is prophesying. May I not ride on an animal and a donkey is prophesying. I am better than a donkey. Put the next verse. Let, let, let's find it quickly. And when the angel which spoke unto Cornelius was departed, he got two of his household servants, a devout soldier of them that waited on him. Called. This man never left his side continually reason why some of you fathers can't send you you are not devoted you are not waiting continually you are always checking in and checking out you only check in when you see there is an opportunity and a father is trying to appoint people fathers know those who are loyal devoted men men devoted whether they rain for they are around they stayed around him continually. 
There are friends that will not abandon you. Family members that will not abandon you. That will not abuse you because you did not give them money. They are around. They are not there because of your money. They are there because they love you. Devoted. Devotion. Commitment. You don't care what they say about you. Bishop, I invited you here because I knew you have been scandalized. God spoke to me. Identify with him when there are pain. When Prophet C.B. Joshua building collapsed, I stood up. That's my area. I don't want you to dress and be colorful before I identify. What is the problem? Our soldiers are injured and our generals are killing them. How many soldiers are bleeding? They are bleeding because generals have killed them. We have mother sleep and we will sleep no more. Put the next verse, verse 8. I will rush it. Don't worry. I want to go somewhere. If there is any message you don't need, in these few minutes, I want you to listen. And when he had clicked, declared all these things unto them, he sent them to Joppa. Verse 9. Verse 9. Go on, go on. And on the morrow, as they went on their journey, he threw night unto a city. And Peter went up upon the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. Hear me, there is a place you enter to pray. You take frequency. It's not just anywhere. There is an, an arena. Am I talking here? It might not just be a mountain. There is a level you enter in tongues. You are already at a strategic position in the prophetic angle of the atmosphere where heavens can open and portals open and you can take charge. We don't have men who go to pray at the ninth hour, at the sixth hour of the day. For men ought to pray always and not fed. The problem I have with the body of Christ at the sixth hour we are gossiping. At the sixth hour we are criticizing. At the sixth hour we are saying this is right, this is wrong. Yes, that. Stop this debate. If there is a man to pray, there is a God to answer. Put the next verse. Let me rush it. And he became very hungry. That he would have eaten. But why? They made ready. He fell into a trance. I said it here yesterday. Sit down, please. Psalm 42, verse 2, verse 7. That deep collect to deep. The only reason why you came here, you are deep. If you are not hungry, you will not be here. It's spiritual hunger that brought you here. If you see a man pursuing wisdom, it is wisdom that helped him to know that he need wisdom. Whenever you see yourself looking for power, it is hunger of power that brought you to the arena of power. You are dead. Stop saying I'm shallow. You are not shallow. You can't leave Zimbabwe here. But you can't leave Tanzania, Botswana, America here, South Africa here. You can't leave your various state and come here. You are deep. It takes a man that is deep to come around the arena of a deeper man. You are not ordinary. You are deeper than what they say. The spiritual hunger that brought us to the place of hunger. Put the next verse. Let me show you, please. I feel like if I don't read it, you will think I'm teaching. And I saw heaven open. And a certain vessel descending unto him as it had been a great sheet of meat at the four corners and led down to the earth. Go to verse 12. Wherein were all manner of four footed beasts of the earth and wild beasts, creeping things, and fowls of the air. Go on, verse 13. And there came a voice to him Rise, Peter, kill and eat. Verse 10, 14. And Peter said, not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. Sit down, let me talk to you. Talk to me, sir. Now, what does this scripture explain? Heaven opened up. 
a big bowl of all manner of beast, unclean beast, snake, pig, unclean things, tender. This vision happened three times, and Peter argued three times and said, These are common and unclean. When I read that, the Lord spoke to me, Son. Read the scripture. He said, where, where was this thing coming from? From heaven. How can you call something from heaven unclean? It came from heaven. Not from earth. But you call it unclean. Because it does not look like what you want. This is what is happening among ministers. Because they felt you look like pig. They felt you look like snake. But they don't believe that you are from heaven. There are so many Peter calling what God has clean unclean. It came from heaven. Peter, were you not afraid to call what came from me unclean? Sit down, let me talk. Too many spiritual sons of zealous preachers Everybody is occultic because by their eyes they see it as pig, they see it as snake, they don't understand how that thing can come from God to the earth because their standard of sanctification and holiness defies God's definition. They don't know how God can use a barrack boy like me. They feel I'm too aggressive. They don't understand. I was raised for people with violent troubles. They feel I'm a beast. Because they don't understand. I was raised for people with stubborn problems. What God has created. You are calling it unclean. Some of you have been cleansed. It is men calling you unclean. Some of you members, you, had, you sit down, you are judging your pastor. You, do you know what is sanctified? When I see too many preachers who vaziliously criticizing everybody, I know they don't know where, they don't know what comes from heaven and what comes from the earth. Because the things that come from heaven might look earthly, but they actually came from heaven. Give me time. How many times have they tried to disapprove you? Because you do not fit their standard. Have you heard people say, all these people, they look like Christ, but they are not from God. They are trying, there are too many Peter in the body of Christ trying to de-sanctify what God has sanctified. Trying to blackmail what God has whitewashed. Do you know why? Let's read on. Let me rush it. Let me rush it. If I stay here, we, I will talk for 30 minutes. And the voice spake unto him again, second time. What has what God had cleansed that call not thou common? What I have cleansed, don't call it common. Your ministry have been cleansed. You have been clean. Don't let any man talk you down. Don't let any man talk. There are people in Nigeria who belong to the school of thought. There are two major spiritual father with due respect to them in Nigeria. If you don't belong to this one or you don't belong to this one, they say you are not called of God. God punish the devil. I respect them, but hear me? Every one of us cannot come from your spiritual father. Ask you, who is your spiritual father? If you don't mention that two, three, 
then you are not genuine. That's it. They don't understand that there are certain beasts that will not come from a man that came from heaven that are cleansed and sanctified by God. Peter, don't call what I've cleaned uncommon or common. This was done thrice and the vessel was received up and again into heaven. Go on. Go on. 17. Now why Peter adopted in himself that this vision which he had seen should mean behold the men which were sent from Cornelius on the line these men were sent from Cornelius had made inquiry for Simon's house and they stood before the gates prophetic brought them to Simon's house Simon Peter had not seen this kind of prophetic prophetic problem go on go on go on go on there are people who are asking why are you operating in the prophetic the way you are operating they don't understand and he called and asked whether simon which was son named peter were lodged there go on verse 19 let's rush it let's rush it and why peter thought on the vision the spirit said unto him behold three men seek the spirit of god now started interpreting the vision to him because he could not have the interpretation of the vision but the spirit of God stepped in the spirit of interpretation put it there and arise therefore and get thee down and go with them adopting nothing for I have sent them pastors the reason why you are struggling is because the Holy Ghost has not convinced the people he has sent you to the only reason why the Peter followed them was because Holy Ghost told him as you get there I've sent you this man and this man I've sent you must follow them hear me what makes ministry grow is for you to be sent and it's for the same spirit that sent you to convince the people he has sent you to that's why when you see people say I saw you in the dream that is the ministry of the angel convincing them if he does not convince them there is no someone that can change them now, okay 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 put that same verse again the same verse arise therefore and get thee down and go with them adopting nothing for I have sent them please Cornelius sent these three men the spirit of God is now saying the man called by Cornelius, sent by Cornelius, he sent by him. It is not all of you that we encounter angel. But if you encounter the man that encounter angel, you can be called and sent by the man that is sent and called by God. The spirit of God said to the three men, for I have sent them. In Exodus 3.18 Then the elders of Israel <laughs> he said, and they shall hearken unto thy voice and thou shalt come and thou and the elders of Israel unto the king of Egypt and ye shall say unto him the Lord God of the Hebrews had met with us and now let us go now hear me God did not appear to the elders he appeared to Moses at the burning bush but the encounter of Moses became the encounter of the elders hear me when your father has an encounter by virtue of divine protocol you have access to the encounter he said then you shall say the Lord God of Israel have appeared to us when I read that God was the one saying if I appear to Moses I've appeared to you the reason why most of you are suffering you don't understand that fathers have encounter for you to be encountered You won't go far if you rele relegate fathers down. Fathers have died and generation have not taken mantles because nobody understands. Looking down on fathers, there are certain encounters with due humility. 
that you can never have that is made for a one man. If you are looking for the mantle of Igila, it's here. If you break the protocol by looking down on me, you can't get it anywhere. Anybody that gives you is counterfeit. Put the next verse. And Peter went down to the men which were sent unto him from Cornelius and said, Behold, I am he who ye seek. What is the cause where ye have come? Go on, go on, go on, go on, go on. And, and they said, Cornelius, the centurion, a just man, and one that feared God, and of good report among all nations of the Jews, was one from God by an holy angel to send for thee into his house and to hear the words of thee. Look at how they describe Cornelius. This is where most sons have missed it. What you say about your father, according to what Bishop is saying, when he's not there, is the true replication of who you are. I believe Cornelius sent this man because these were men of good report. Some of us, our church are not growing because of ushers and people around. You love them, but when they sit around, they can easily gossip around. I don't allow smiles to move me. I've seen the hypocrisy of men. The betrayers. I've seen people can laugh with you in the morning and backstab you in the night. I've raised sons, pour out myself in them, and I've seen them call me useless. I've cried like a baby, not because of the sin I committed, but because of the betrayals of sons. Some of you spiritual sons, you have made fathers to die before their time. The blood of some spiritual fathers are on the head of sons. Introduce Cornelius as a man that feared God, a noble man. How many times have you talked good about your father? Why is it that is when we have car from a father that is good? Please, I will round up. Some of you are branch pastors. The reason why your church is not growing under any ministry, you are killing the set man light. The angel of the church can't work for you. You want to have what took a man 30 something years of his life. You just came to ministry 8 years. You are envious of your father. In a Prado Jeep. But you have forgotten there was a time. He was walking barefooted. Too many sons. Who want the glory of the father. But not the pathway of the father. When you get to a level. The duty of your father. Is to create a platform for you. And put you on the platform. The amplification of the platform and the commitment and the workability of the platform. If you are called by God, you have to connect to God. You want to build house that took your father 30 years to get there. If he gives you a few months better, don't kill your father to acquire greatness. One of my son called me and said, Papa, I'm tired. Ministry is rough. And he sent me a picture. Then I took one of my old pictures and I sent to him. And when he saw my old picture, he saw that his own, he was a king in front of me. I said, you're talking about suffering. You don't have suffering. 
He said, I've emaciated. I sent him another picture of how I look when I was drinking Gary for one year. I rented a place for one of my sons, three bedroom flat. He said, the place is not good. I sent him my one room apartment for him to see. God warned me about emotional attachment in decision in ministry. I told some of my son, I said, if you don't want, if you know you are called, you pay. You face the work. That's where I stayed. And Jesus was Lord. The Holy Ghost was there. The power of God was working in me. It never dried. The way I preach, the way I shout, that's how I'm still shouting up to today. My fire never dropped because of car, because of aircraft. This fire remained the same. Why are we so in a hurry? Then Peter got to Cornelius' house. And Cornelius knelt down. And Peter said, no, no, no. Don't worship me because I'm a mere man like you. And Cornelius started telling him the story of how he encountered the angel. And how the angel sent him to Peter. Now Peter, after hearing all that was said, it was on that ground. Peter was now telling them how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. That this thing did not just happen overnight. We saw him. How he went down to River Jordan to be baptized of John the Baptist. That he had to go down in humility to grab the oil. That Christos don't just jump. The oil don't jump on people that are not humble. Too many proud generations can carry the oil. And make them to understand. It was after he was anointed. He went about doing good. Healing the sick. Some of you are not anointed. You are going about doing good. They will kill you. Then he said. And the Lord was with him. You can get the gift and not get him. God gave himself as a gift to him. Stand up everybody. The anointing is real. It amplifies me. Sir, as much as you can pray, if you are not humble, the oil won't drop on you. Hear me. There are men like Peter who will not go to the house of Cornelius. Because they feel Cornelius is a Gentile. I told some men of God. I heard them preach. I don't associate with another man of God. Who is looking for your association? But the question I ask. If you are anointed by God. You should be able to cast out the demon in a false prophet. If you are running from a false prophet. You are confessing your weakness. Jesus went to the house of Zacchaeus. He ate among the publican and his oil was not affected. The question I ask you. How can your anointing be afraid of a mere man who is unclean? We invited some musicians to come here. Some men will go call them. Hey, don't go there, don't go there, don't go there. If you go there, they will affect your anointing. I, call, I told one of them, I said, don't you have Jesus? Climb the altar and clean the, the altar with your Jesus. So your Jesus can't clean the altar. Fake men everywhere. Fake. 
Faith. Faith. Sectionalism. Insecurity. Inferiority complex. Jesus does not come from your village. You cannot monopolize him. He's the savior. Be my savior. Not only your savior. What makes your salvation better than my salvation? The same blood that washed you, washed me. The same Jesus that died for you, died for me. Hear me. Don't let them reduce you. Don't let them. Don't let them. Don't, don't let them. Don't let them. This is the first time Peter will see somebody that was not with Jesus in the flesh talking about encounter of angel describing the house. Cornelius said, we knew where you were staying. We also knew that the house where staying was not your house. It belonged to one Simon of Joba. Prophetic description. <laughs> when the days where God is approving men, not men approving men. We had an election in this country. And everybody was endorsing a particular candidate. I stood here and said, this is the voice of God. Because I've learned by experience that God is not emotional. Call it whatever is the process of the outcome. And I want men of God. I say, don't, don't do this thing that you are doing so that the name of the Lord might not be blasphemed among the Gentiles. They abused me. They insulted me. I want them. Hear me. We are in the days that it's the sharpest that can pick the sharpest voice. The power where you stand will determine the frequency. Spiritual connectivity is not about having answers. It is the composition of your network. Can't it? Some people out here and they can pick anything. I'm running up. What are you picking? Stretch your hands to the altar. Set up. I'm releasing you, don't worry. Grace! Anointing that announced. He suffered and the oil came. And when the oil came, the oil was all over. Now, why Peter was still speaking? The Bible didn't say they understood. The Bible said, and the Holy Ghost came on them. The Holy Ghost cannot be understood or understand can be experienced. Sometimes you want to understand. That's why you are not catching. The wind blew it where no man knew where it come from. So are they that are born of the spirit. Some of the things I've able to do in my life it came as a result of the anointing. The anointing. The anointing. The anointing. The anointing. There are men who started with me who are adopting me. I don't blame them. I was the least of the least. I was not sharp among them. He uses the foolish things of this earth to confirm the wisdom of the wise. You don't need to be qualified to be elevated. 